Hey craft friends, welcome to my channel. Let's get started. Here are the supplies we're gonna be using today. Two of these bunny signs from the Dollar Tree and this free printable that you can get down below in my description box. I made this for you all a couple weeks ago for a different craft and we're gonna be repurposing it again today. So you're gonna cut out the two different papers and then glue them together at the center point where they line up. Then you're gonna take that bunny printable and you're going to pin it to some fabric of your choice. I'm gonna be using this nice tan burlap and then you're gonna go ahead and cut them out and put them to the side. Now for your bunny signs, you're gonna pop off the feet and the bow and the tags at the top and I'm gonna go ahead and just save these feet and bow because we're gonna use that next Friday for another craft. So hold on to those, don't get rid of them. Now you're gonna take some foam core board and you're gonna cut it down to size so that it will fit nicely with your signs. That way so this has something to glue together on and it has a really nice finished backside of your project. Once those are glued down, go ahead and take the paint color of your choice. I'm gonna be going with this really pretty blue color and I wanted to have a little bit of a weathered look because I like the farmhouse look. You could end up painting all the way up to the sides, but I wanted to show a little bit of that brown around on the sides. Then you're gonna take some of these stickers from the Dollar Tree. I love these. I don't know if you all have picked some of these up or if they're even at your local store for the Dollar Tree, but I love them. They are such a great price, and I love using them all the time on signs like this, especially if you are not so good with hand painting letters or you don't have a Cricut cutting type machine that can do that for you. So stickers like this are so great. So once you've got down what you want, I put the bunny in the middle so you can see there that I wanted to make sure I got the spacing right. Go ahead and Mod Podge your letters down permanently. This will keep them from peeling up over time. Then you're gonna go ahead and glue down your bunny that you cut out earlier. You can see here that I cut out two of them so it would be nice and thick. And then I added a pom-pom tail and then I also added a bow up at the top. For some reason, I don't have that footage. But then on the back side, when I flipped it over, I ended up adding a rope to the top. Today is a Hop Friday, and if you don't know what that is, it's really simple. Linked down below my description box, there will be a new channel that you're gonna hop onto that maybe you haven't seen yet. I love doing these Hop Fridays because it's gonna introduce you to all of these new craft channels that maybe you've never visited yet. As you click that link, the next girl will have a link, the next girl will have a link, and you'll be able to just keep hopping all the way through. All right, our next craft project is going to be one geared more towards kids or little teens, tweens, I guess I would say. And it's just the cutest, sweetest craft. And I wanted to make sure I shared this one because sometimes we want to craft with our grandchildren or our children in general. And this is a really fun, sweet project. So I'm taking these supplies, some felt, some yarn of your color choice, and then these little wooden spools that you can get from Hobby Lobby. And I used a 40% off coupon. I love these things. I think they're so cute. So you're gonna just add some hot glue like you saw me do there. And then you're gonna just keep wrapping around that yarn until you get to the very end. You could also use embroidery thread, but I used yarn because that's what I had on hand. And then you're gonna take these little tiny pom-pom balls from the Dollar Tree and some of the puffy paint, and we're gonna add on a tail, eyes, whiskers, and a nose to create a little bunny face. Once you've got all those on, you're then gonna cut out the ears. You're gonna cut out two white ears and then smaller inner part of the ears that are pink, and you're gonna hot glue those together. Once you've got them hot glued together, add a little hot glue once again at the bottom, and you're gonna just put those little ears together, and then use something that's small, like a small paintbrush, and just push them down inside so they're hot glued down into the top part of that spool. If you haven't already, please click that thumbs up button. It really helps out my channel. And click the subscribe button if you are new. 
If you don't know, I have an Instagram account. So many of you have been coming over to say hi to me and tag your projects so that I can see them. It has been so much fun chatting with you all over there. So come by and say hi so we can get to know each other even better. Our next project are going to be using these supplies. Now I know a lot of you have seen how to make this glass fixture where you take E6000 and glue a candle stem to a vase. And I'm not going to show that part because I know it's been showed a whole bunch, but I want to show you a decorative idea for Easter, which is really cute by taking these eggs and filling them up. I realized it needed about two and a half bags. So you can do that and stop there, or we can do something even more DIY ish and you can pull all of those strings out of the tops of the eggs, or I guess the bottoms <laughs> of the eggs. And then we're going to create an ombre effect with paint. So you start with a darker color, just like I'm doing here, and I'm using my fingers. I could do this thing where you, you know, poke them in with a needle and hold them up and paint them, but honestly, this just is the fastest way to do it. You're gonna have to get your fingers dirty a little bit, and if you're okay with getting your fingers dirty, then this is gonna be the project for you, or you could always poke them on a needle and paint them each by with a brush and do it that way, but I like doing it this way. The one regret I will say that I had is I wish I filled the bottom of each of the eggs. They have these little holes where the ribbons were in. I wish I had filled each one with maybe a little bit of hot glue so that the little holes weren't so noticeable once I painted them. They weren't as noticeable before I painted them and then afterwards I was like, bummer, I wish I had filled in those holes. So if you do this project, just keep in mind to fill those little holes. But as you keep doing your eggs, you're going to keep lessening that color by adding more white paint. So I started with a really dark pink, then I added some white paint, it went a little lighter, then I added some more white paint, and then it went a little lighter again, and then I added some more white paint until it got all the way down to a very icy pink, baby pink color, as you can see here that I'm doing. So just keep playing with it until you get those colors, those mediums that you need for your ombre effect and make sure that you just keep adding in those colors until you get all the way through all of your eggs. And another tip is, is make sure you give yourself enough paint to work with. I've had that happen a couple times when I'm doing ombre effects where you can run out of your paint. So don't go too crazy pouring too much, but make sure you just have enough to be able to cover all of your eggs so that you don't have any issues. Then once they're all dry, you're going to put them back inside the glass container, super easy peasy, and start with the darkest at the bottom and work your way up to the lightest at the top. And technically you could reverse it and do lightest at the bottom, darkest to the top, but it just has such a pretty effect. And if you did these with different colors, it would look so beautiful on a dinner table or an entry table. Now, if you don't know, I have two challenges this month. I'm going to link that video as well down below so you can check them out. If you have a channel and you want to play along, I would love it if you like DIY crafting challenges. Our next project we're going to be moving on to is this little sign. I picked up these little wood pieces again from Hobby Lobby. I love these wood pieces at Hobby Lobby. They have a lot of really great selections there. And then I'm going to be using this sign. I believe it's a four by four sign that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I'm only going to be painting just the front of it. I'm not even going to be painting the sides. I loved the neutral paper it had around it so I didn't think that was necessary to paint the sides. But you can paint it whatever color you want. And then I am going to take some hot glue and you can see that I'm doing the hook part of the sign facing down so that way it's not top heavy. That's a really important part when you're using these signs and these cute little stems that I'm using from Hobby Lobby. Then you're gonna take some stickers from the Dollar Tree. I love these mini stickers. They have them over in their scrapbook section. And then you're gonna put down whatever sign you want. I decided to go with, um, he is not here for he is risen for Easter. And then I'm gonna take some green paint and go around the whole scripture and just paint on little leaves in a circular shape. I also went back, but I lost the footage for that with little dots on the back side of my brush. I tapped little dots and I added a bow at the bottom. Then seal it all together with some Mod Podge. Leave a comment down below to let me know what was your favorite craft project that I did today. 
Don't forget to hop along to the next girl in the hop order for this friend Friday. Thanks so much for stopping by. And until the next episode, bye friends.